Okay, part two, the fungi. So we are on uh, slide 12 here. Is it not slide 12, sorry, slide four, section 12.1, the fungi. So fungi, a very broad kind of um, set of organisms. They do have a few characteristics that all fungi share, but in terms of form, and what they look like and where you find them there is a huge huge variety. Generally we can break down our fungi into three types. Uh, molds and I'm sure we're all familiar with mold because we uh, find it on our food so you leave a bit of bread out or you leave your loaf of bread in the in the cupboard for too long and you pull it out and there's fuzzy uh, weird looking stuff growing on it and we all recognize that as being mold. There are yeasts. Yeasts refer to a whole range of different kinds of fungi. As long as the fungi is single-celled, <coughs> typically it's called a yeast. But there's no, again, yeast is not a term that describes any relationship. There are a whole number of different kinds of fungi. Lots of different kinds of fungi have a single-celled um, uh, example. So there's a yeast, but it's very unrelated to this yeast and very unrelated to this yeast. They're just called yeasts because they are single celled. And then there are mushrooms. And this is probably the thing that you think of when you uh, imagine a fungi. You imagine uh, maybe in, your, in the grass, a mushroom growing up, or you imagine walking through a woodland and you see mushrooms growing on uh, rotting logs and that kind of thing. So, how do we know if a fungi is a fungi? On to slide five, we can look at its cellular structure. And fungi, of course, are uh, um, eukaryotes, but they have a very distinct cell wall. So lots of different things have cell walls. We had cell walls in the bacteria, made out of peptidoglycan. We have cell walls in the archaea, made out of various different stuff. We have cell walls in the fungi. We have cell walls in the algae and the plants. Algae and plants often made of cellulose. So a cell wall is just a structure that uh, surrounds the plasma membrane. It's what the cell wall is made out of. That's the important stuff. So on the slide here, we have a diagram of the cell wall of a fungi. And one important chemical that is found in fungi cell walls is this stuff called chitin. Chitin is a structural polysaccharide. So it's made up of poly means many. It's made up of many subunits. Um, Chitin is often is used in other places too. The uh, arthropods, an insect for example, the reason why an um, insect is crunchy on the outside is that it has a chitin exoskeleton. Another important difference between uh, a fungi and other eukaryotes is their cell membranes. They have a chemical in their cell membrane called ergosterol. We have a, uh, humans, animals indeed, have a chemical in our cell membrane called cholesterol. And ergosterol and cholesterol are very similar. They have the same job. They are structural elements in the membrane. They strengthen the membrane and they allow it to be uh, they maintain its fluidity, I mean, they make it um, not rigid, so it's strong but flexible. And that's the job of uh, cholesterol in us, uh, gesterol in fungi. And indeed, we looked at uh, some of the ideas of targeting fungi with antifungal drugs, and that uh, gesterol was an important target because a human being doesn't make it. We don't have a biochemical pathway that makes it. So fungi uh, have this uh, unique cell wall. 
and in addition to that they are all heterotrophic which means that they ingest material from the environment. In this case the fungi excretes enzymes, the enzymes snip up the chemicals, for example a fungi growing on a dead log, it has these little threads growing into the log, releasing enzymes, snipping up the materials and then that material being reabsorbed into the fungi. <coughs> fungi, probably fungi are one of the kinds of eukaryotes that really don't, humans don't have a, a kind of a really important, or at least not that we're aware of, relationship. If you were to walk out of your door and look around at the, at the living things, you would see lots of plants and you would see uh, lots of animals running around. You would see lots of fungi, but a lot of the fungi that in the environment is hidden away. <clears throat> but fungi has an extremely important uh, role in the environment. It is a decomposer. Along with bacteria, fungi is uh, the primary, the principal decomposers. So when an organism dies, its uh, component parts are broken apart by bacteria and broken apart by fungi and then they are recyclers. Those organisms recycle uh, dead material back into the environment. <clears throat> Along with bacteria, fungi have the ability to degrade cellulose. Cellulose is the stuff that plant cell walls are made out of. They also have the ability to uh, degrade lignin. Lignin is the stuff that makes wood very hard. It's lignin that um, it has made wood so valuable uh, to humans in terms of uh, building. No animal, uh, in fact very few other organisms, can uh, use cellulose and lignin as a source of food. Through this breakdown, things are released. Carbon dioxide is released through the breakdown and nitrogen is returned to the soil. Nitrogen is a very important uh, element. We need nitrogen for building all of our nucleotides. Our, so we need ni nitrogen to build our DNA. We need nitrogen to build our RNA. We need nitrogen to build all of our proteins. In fact, a whole host of, um, of organic compounds require nitrogen. If a fungi is going to feed on dead and decaying material, it's going to decompose that material, we can call that fungi saprophytic, in that it is the, the tree uh, dies, it falls over, it's dead, and then the fungi eat it. So nutrients from dead or decaying matter. That makes them different to parasites. Parasites are organisms that live on living tissue. And there are many fungi too that are parasites. There are fungi that infect humans. And there are more fungi that uh, infect plants. Fungi have relationships with all kinds of things. There are many symbiotic relationships that fungi form. And many of those forms are mutualistic, i.e. both things benefit. So this picture here on uh, slide six is of a lichen. And this isn't in fact one single organism, it's two things living together. It is a fungi and the fungi provides the structure and then living inside that fungi, in fact inside that, strongle, that, that fungal structure are things like algae. And algae then can perform photosynthesis and they share, the algae shares the, the uh, sugars it produces and the fungi gives the algae a place to live. On to slide seven, fungal structure. So again, when we think about a fungi, picture a fungi, maybe you'll picture a mushroom. Maybe if you're a person who goes into the woods and forages for morals, you'll picture a, a moral. But when we do see a fungi growing, say, a mushroom in a field. 
that's only a very small part of the fungi. Most of the fungi is underground. A whole mass of these threads. The, uh, the mushroom part of this fungus is only present in uh, certain times of the year. And its only purpose is for reproduction. Its purpose is for spore formation and to disperse those spores. When the uh, mushroom itself dies, the fungi is still there under the ground. So we, we can really think of this as being the body of the fungus. And this is just the extra stuff the fungus makes when it wants to reproduce. Each of these individual strands is a hypha, making several strands hyphae. And the whole thing together as a lump is a mycelium. So the whole thing is a mycelium comprised of fungal hypha or hyphae. And it's the hyphae that are growing throughout their environment, in this case growing in the soil, or in the case of a fungus on a log, growing into the log. And it's the hyphae who are releasing those digestive enzymes and then they are reabsorbing the nutrients and then they can, they can pump the nutrients around the network of hyphae so that all of the parts of the fungus get their, uh, kind of their fair share of the nutrients. Okay, uh, on to slide eight. Those hyphae, those uh, fungi strands, they can have specialized jobs. So a fungi that wants to steal nutrients from, say, living plant cells. It'll make fungal hyphal strands that are called hostoria. They stick into the plant cells and then they can absorb the nutrients directly out of the cells. There are other kinds of hyphae. So your bread mold, for example, the way that the uh, fungi anchors itself to the bread is through growing um, hyphae called rhizoids. Other hyphae we see in the bread mold, the way that the uh, fungi can move from point to point to point. Now, another important thing about fungi is that they are immobile in terms of they can't get up and walk around but they can grow from place to place. So they'll grow in one place and they'll uh, use their rhizoids to anchor and uh, digest. And then they'll shoot off this uh, piece of hyphae called a stolon and that'll move the fungus to the next location. And then it can, um, it can set up and use the material. And then for the case of this bread mold, when it wants to go through reproduction, it'll send up a piece of hyphae called a, uh, a sporangiophore and it'll make a structure called a sporangium on the top that contains the, um, the spores. So fungi do have specialized hyphae. Two ones that I uh, mentioned here in particular, Astoria, stealing plant nutrients and rhizoids that anchor our bed mold to the, subs the uh, substrate. On to uh, slide nine, structure of fungi. Uh, some fungi can be dimorphic. So di, let me see the di in front of a word in science or in biology, typically means two. That means it has uh, two forms 
in its life cycle and often it can switch backwards and forwards between these forms. So a dimorphic, a dimorphic fungi typically has a yeast uh, um, in its life cycle. It, it, it has a life cycle phase that is a yeast, called yeast again, single cell fungi. And then it can transform given certain conditions into a multicellular mycelium. I guess that should stop here. Another point about the uh, fungi compared at least to the plants and the animals. When we think about plants in the terms of the six kingdom system, they're all multicellular. When we think about animals in terms of the six kingdom system, they're all multicellular. The uh, fungi can be both. They can be multicellular and they can be single celled. They're single celled, they're often called yeast. Histoplasma capsulatum is a, an example that uh, you may have heard of, causes the disease histoplasmosis. Uh, it is a mold. It grows in soil, also grows in other kind of in other places. So it's found in the environment. In this case, we have uh, bats hanging out in the attic, and we have uh, bat poop, and there are the fungal uh, life cycle in the bat poop, and then the human breathes in the spores and the spores get into your lungs and they develop into the yeast stage of the life cycle and it's that yeast stage that causes the disease. So different forms, different life cycle forms in different places. Let's stop it there for that. So this section is fungal structure.